Okay, in this video, I'm going to show how to uh, use the um, TI Stellaris uh, board uh, together with MetaLab and Simulink to do a very easy uh, prototyping kind of task. Uh, I will show three demos. Uh, the first one, which is a demo here, so uh, it blinks uh, the onboard LED. It's a, actually an RGB LED randomly. Um, let me open the file. Okay, here is a block diagram of the program. Um, what they show around here is a, a random randomized block. Uh, it has two random modes. On the above, it random every sample. Uh, so it's basically uh, every sample is random. The second one is like kind of pseudo random. Uh, it uh, generates a random sequence and it's just looping that random sequence uh, every time. Um, here is a little bit complicated, but uh, it's actually very easy to understand. So this uh, mox actually, uh, it's not actually a mox, it's a big twice R. It created the mask for, the, for setting the, uh, the uh, port register. And here is the data that came from it. And uh, now we are trying the random uh, every build. So it, every build is generated a random sequence. Let's see how it works. So by hitting Control and B, it starts to build. And you can see from the Mala window, it starts to uh, run the build. Uh, it's actually already finished. So this is uh, the effect of it. It just, if you look long enough, you will find it's uh, kind of having a, 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 a constant switching between uh, colors. And if we go back and switch a mode to random every sample, so basically it, it's a random signal, a random number generator, uniform random generator. So uh, Here's the parameters. And convert to the data type it requires. And then fit it to it. Let's see how it works. Uh, again, I just hit Control and Build. Uh, so it, this time it's fast enough to, to see it's built. Now it's downloading. And down. So here's the um, uh, effect of the new random like program. Um, you would like to see um, it's just blink randomly, so you, you can't really find a, a, a sequence out of it, even if you look long enough. So this is a uh, this demo basically shows how to uh, how to use. Uh, um, how to use the bit I uh, sorry the port I O. Um, I'm just showing uh, output, but input is similarly easy. And the second demo I want to show now this one is ADC demo. ADC uh, uh, we have eight channels of ADC. Um, let's make it make it a little bit larger so it's easy to see now. Um, we have a. a Running indicator, which is just the same as the random uh, stuff, because I want to see if it's the the code is still running, um, just in case it's frozen or something. It's not you. Uh, it's not uh, necessary for this demo. Uh, you can see the AD block is numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. So that represents eight channels. For the first four channels, I just output. Uh, the value after the uh, bit data type conversion into a debug print. Uh, the debug print just print the data in this format and to the to the uh, serial cable, and we're gonna uh, we can we are, we are able to see the the output data from. Let me see. I close that accidentally. Sorry. Okay. We're gonna. We are able to uh, see the um, debug print data from a, 
uh, like a serial cable debugger. Let's set it aside. And uh, for the, the 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 channel eight to channel sorry channel five to channel eight, I did a conversion. The conversion uh, is actually like this. So it's a uh, uh, thirty three thousand uh, over uh, six thousand uh, and uh, ninety six. This is a conversion from the raw data uh, I get from the, the, the ADC because ADC is a uh, how many channel is a twelve bit and if it's uh, um, it's all one the output if the output is all one it represents uh, three point three volts. Okay, so in the second in the second part which is a channel five and eight I'm going to output. Uh, the stuff in millivolts. Notice I, I noted uh, unit millivolts here. Uh, the same thing with hit control plus B, and you can also do it here from a, a button on the. I think it's this one. It is built. Uh, it's the same, uh, but I, contr I prefer control plus B. Um, after it's running, it's still showing the same. Uh, because I have that uh, running indicator, which is the same program, and you can see from this, uh, oh, make it too big. So you can see it's uh, printing 84, oh, sorry, 81 to 4 and 85 to 8 result. Now uh, 1 to 4 in the raw uh, measurement and 5 to 8 in millivolts. If I put my hand on the pins, which I may extend it short. Uh, not really short, connect the, the, the AD pin to some other pins because the AD is high impedance so my hand resistance is actually counting as low uh, low resistance so it's actually affecting the data say if I put the hand on it's showing big numbers and the leave the hand off it's showing small numbers if I'm shorting different set of pins it's actually get smaller smaller numbers like it's hard to play with it but you know it's outputting data. Um, Alright, that's it. Uh, so that shows uh, the AD and capability of the blocks. The block is actually very easy to use. Uh, so it only has one input which is channel and it's drop down select, so just select the channel you want. And here you can see the channel and the, the corresponding pin. And the pin, for example, PE3 is around here. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's probably too close. So the PE3 is around here. All right, so this table just is a quick look at many for the pins. And with AD, we have like analog input capability, uh, but we still need some kind of output capability. Uh, for this one, I'm going to show the PWM demo. Although PWM is not really a DA, and I don't think they have DA in this chip, uh, I mean, on this board. Uh, yeah, actually, we don't need this. This is the same stuff I use to, um, to, to signify it's still running, but we don't need that. So, uh, so here's the, the, the PWM uh, output. Uh, we can set the frequency over here. So this is like 100k, pretty high. And uh, this is like 10k. So we have two PWM channels over here. Totally we have six, but I'm just demoing two of them. The first we are showing a constant uh, duty cycle. The second one, I'm showing a variable duty cycle, which is just a sine wave style duty cycle. And to view this, we probably need a oscilloscope. We're gonna go ahead and turn that on, and it's uh, gonna take a few seconds to to start that thing. And by the same time, I'm going to hit Control and B to rebuild. It's take a while. Um, let's see. Um, still doing things. Uh, by the same time, I'm going to uh, connect a few wires to it. Uh, the first wire is uh, is a, is a, of course a ground. Sorry, I have a call. I have to 
mute it. And uh, I'm gonna hook the ground, where is it? Ground ping. Okay. Take some time. Okay, this is a, uh, which channel is this? Sorry, this is the wrong channel. I'm gonna hook uh, the ground clip to ground. So here you can see, uh, probably you can't see it. So the first two is ground and third one is uh, 3.3 volts. And for this, I probably don't want to hook the the wire hook to the, the pin directly because I accidentally may cause shot. Uh, let me see, I forget which pin is it. So I just double click the block and there's a quick look at the table. Say uh, channel one is PC4 and channel two is PC5. That's like a good reference to it. So let's say channel four, uh, channel one, which is PC4 first. Hook it up to PC4 and uh, clip the wire uh, to the probe. And you can see on the on the oscilloscope it shows 99.99 .99 or 100 kilohertz. If you uh, zoom in out, you can see it's roughly 20% of duty cycle. Let's see the other one, which is uh, the the variable duty cycle output. Uh, let's make it, yeah make it beautiful. So you can see it's variable from uh, zero to maximum duty cycle in this way, which is pretty nice. And in addition, let's go back to the block again. So there's more settings than that. So beside the frequency, you have channels and sample, sample time. The sample time, I'm just using the default, which is the, I think I set it to 0 0.2 second. Mm -hmm but you can definitely set it higher. So we can do invert output on the channel one and see what happens. Okay, hit okay, and build again. This current doesn't have external mode um, kind of things, but if later we have that support, uh, it's kind of uh, better because you can change it in runtime instead of rebuild every time. Um, I think it's finished building. So let's switch back to switch back to the first channel. Now, if I zoom in now, so instead of kind of 20% um, uh, duty cycle, it's become 80% uh, kind of. It's 20% low. So this uh, check mark, which I use, this check mark is actually uh, an easy way to uh, switch between um, the, the two levels because some of the system use like high as um, a logic zero or something. I mean, you don't have to do a mine conversion of those. Uh, so you can just hit the invert output. I'm going to change it back just in case it confused me. Okay, this concludes the demo of uh, TI Stellaris uh, board. Um, with uh, Simulink and uh, a toolbox I built um, in order to use uh, AD and PWM and uh, digital port I.O. capability. The, 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 the Stellaris actually is a previous uh, version of the Launchpad um, like collection. Now they have a board called, um, called uh, this one. So it's the important, the new enhanced Tiva C. Theory is available. I mean, it's not available, but currently, by the time I showed the video, it's still showing a uh, shipping uh, time of like two, three weeks. It's a leading time through two, three weeks. So, if you sh uh, purchase it today, it's still gonna take your uh, two, three weeks to get it, uh, which is not good. So, I'm suggesting if you want to play with it now, you can buy this uh, $7.99 which is $8 old version of it, which is still called Stellaris. Uh, I'm feeling this is good enough for me, so I don't care about the TVC or something new. Mm. Let's conclude the video. Thank you for watching.